Dr. Fauci is announcing right now that California has uh, found its first case of Omicron, the uh, new variation on the virus. Uh, that case in California caused only mild symptoms. This might be good news. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, the, on the other hand, it might be bad news. Omicron uh, spreading. We're, we're still waiting to find out how, how nasty this bug is. And it is clearly more contagious, though, than, than, uh, than any of the other variants. But, you know, what brought this about? The fact that South Africa is only, you know, minimally vaccinated. And so, boom, you've got uh, these, these viruses mutating like crazy which leads us to a conversation about how do we get the rest of the world vaccinated. On the line with us is our old buddy, Lori Wallach, Executive Director for Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, tradewatch.org or citizen.org slash trade. Um, uh, and uh, uh, PCGTW is the Twitter handle for Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, just, you know, the acronym, or at Wallach Lori, L-O-R-I. Uh, Lori, welcome back to the program. Uh, what's the what's the uh, current status? Well, I, I was going to say what's the current status of trips waivers, but probably before we get to that, for people who have not heard our previous conversations, let's just describe, or if you could please describe for people, what a trips waiver is and why it's important. Thanks, Tom. The WTO has rules that require all 164 member countries guarantee pharmaceutical corporations monopoly powers to control how much vaccine and treatment is made and where it can be sold. And this is a general set of rules about all medicines, but when it comes to vaccines and treatments for COVID-19, obviously in the middle of a global pandemic, we can't have these intellectual property monopolies limiting the supply of vaccines. Because the only way we're going to stop this endless cycle of variant and endless pandemic is if enough vaccines are made, enough treatments are made, enough tests are made, so that the whole world can get covered. And as you said, for all of the low-income countries, about 7% of people have been inoculated. There's simply not enough being made because the Modernas, the Pfizers, the handful of big guys are making enough to make a lot of profit selling it in rich countries. But we're billions of doses short to actually cover the whole world. And until we actually get everyone vaccinated, we're going to have cycle after cycle of these variants. Yeah, yeah. So the TRIPS waiver, uh, you know, it, from the point of view of Pfizer or Moderna, Moderna, by the way, there's uh, a recent uh, piece over at Truth Out by Michael Ludwig uh, saying Moderna has said, uh, no, we're not going to share it, uh, but we will build a factory in Africa. So we'll, we'll profit off the low-income countries, but we're not going to, sh you know, but, but you, we've got, there are countries all over the world that have vaccine manufacturing technology um, in you know what's referred to as the third world and the developing world and all that kind of thing. Um, so if, if the World Trade Organization was, were to grant these intellectual property waivers, in other words, set aside the patent protections on these vaccines, does that mean that the companies are basically getting ripped off or is there some benefit to the companies in allowing third party uh, co other companies in these other countries to manufacture vaccines according to their formula? Well, the first thing is this waiver that's been proposed by South Africa and India, as you call it, the TRIPS waiver that stands for waiving the agreement on trade-related intellectual property rules, those monopolies. What that would mean is that countries could have local qualified producers start to make the vaccines, also the treatments for people get sick. But depending on the country's laws, a not insignificant percent of royalty payment and the percentages are set in countries' laws would get paid back to the companies. So it's not a free-for-all. But it, so a lot of people think, though, that specifically with respect to Moderna, it should be no payment because, Tom, we already paid for it. So Moderna's research and all the background research, frankly, for Pfizer, too, that's all government-funded. That research on the basic platform you know, the messenger RNA, programming RNA to basically fight an illness. That research has been funded for decades in the U.S. and around the world by governments. It was actually scientists at the University of Pennsylvania who ultimately figured out how to make this work funded by the U.S. government. Mm. And so the companies have all built on that. But then Moderna literally has taken billions 
all of their all of their science was with the NIH. The NIH, the National Institutes of Health, a government agency, holds some of the patents. And they did the actual vaccine together. All of the testing, billions of dollars of testing was government funded. And then the U.S. government prepaid whether or not they were going to have a successful vaccine, prepaid for hundreds of millions of doses to make sure Moderna could produce the trial vaccine. So we basically paid for it. But yes, to answer your direct question, whether or not it's fair that the companies get paid again, yes, under different countries' laws, the percentage is different, but countries get paid. Companies get paid. So they're not going to be hurt. They just may not make quite as much profit as they would make if they could magically instantly uh, create factories all around the world or license this product to those other companies uh, at the same price that they're selling it here in the United States. Well, no, no, it's much worse than that. They could have done that. They have the opportunity to do that. These qualified producers all around Africa, Asia, Latin America have been begging the vaccine monopolists to give them money to get a voluntary license so they can make it there. They've been trying to do just what you said. The reason we have this crisis and the shortage is that those vaccine companies do not want to have other companies learn how to make their vaccines. They have explicitly said, no, Mm. we will not let you pay us to do this. That's why the TRIPS waiver becomes so important. If the companies had voluntarily agree, we wouldn't be in this crisis. The shortage is because they refuse to actually share, to be paid, to make someone else, to let someone else make their product. So, by the way, I, I, um, I'm just keeping track of this uh, uh, Fauci press conference. The person in California who got Omicron, Omicron from, uh, was a person who traveled here from South Africa, apparently picked it up there, had mild symptoms, but was fully vaccinated. So that doesn't indicate that, you know, the Omicron is better or worse and, my, my earlier mentioned that maybe that's good news. So set that aside for the moment. So uh, back to this, uh, Lori. Uh, Joe Biden came out a couple days ago and said that these TRIPS waivers should be put into place. Um, he, I, I think he first said this back in May or June. So the United States government is on record as saying to the World Trade Organization, let the rest of the world have vaccines. Um, what's, the, what's the bottleneck here? So the reason a year after this proposal was first put forward, we're nowhere, and millions of people are going to die for lack of access to these vaccines. The reason is two things. One, the European Union, led by Germany, is blocking the waiver. And is and Germany the, 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 home, the home country for Pfizer? Uh, Germany is the home country from, for a company called BioNTech, who is the partner with Pfizer. Pfizer yeah. didn't create the vaccine. This German company did, and then they made a license with Pfizer to manufacture it and sell it for them. Okay. So, yes, the so Pfizer they, so vaccine. So they, they want to protect German profits? Is that the deal? Or German, is this some sort of weird German nationalism? I mean, is this a political thing in Germany? It's unimaginable. There is huge protest in Germany against this position, but on the political elite and the new incoming chancellor hasn't reversed it. They have then organized the whole European Union to be against. So the European wow. Union is now blocking 130 other countries who are for the waiver. But, Tom, the second problem is the Biden administration has not really stepped up to lead. They've said repeatedly, rhetorically, wonderfully that they're for it. They got great credit for that because Trump had been blocking it with Europe. It's a great development that the U.S. is for the waiver as a concept. But it's only actually going to get implemented if the U.S. steps up and actually engages in getting a final deal. And to date, the U.S. has been on the sidelines. And there will never be a final deal unless the U.S. steps up, in part, to get Europe, our ally, to knock it off. Right. So what's uh, we're talking with Lori Wallach, the executive director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, TradeWatch.org. So, Lori, what is the call for action here? I mean, does Congress need to pass, if nothing else, a resolution saying it's the sense of Congress that that uh, the WTO needs to get off its butt? Or is I mean, uh, what do we do? How, who, who do we is, is there any way that we can start applying pressure to make this happen? So you're actually channeling some of the great champions in Congress. HCON Res 60 has been sponsored by Congressman Schakowsky, Congressman DeLauro, Congressman Blumenauer, Doggett, and others. It's a resolution we should get every member of the House to sponsor because, Tom, it says exactly what you just said, which is, number one, this WTO waiver must be passed immediately. Number two, 
the U.S. government has to use its existing authority to compel Moderna to share the technology to speed up the production once you waive, once you unlock the IP barriers. And then number three, the U.S. government needs to take the money Congress has already authorized and help set up these production facilities around the world to get these shots made and in arms. It's a one, two, three, H. Conrez 60. It's called the End the Pandemic Now Resolution. The End the Pandemic Now Resolution. Hmm. If you go to tradewatch.org, you can get all the background information you would possibly need, tradewatch.org, to be able to call your member of Congress to get them on the resolution. Wonderful. Lori Wallach. Lori, thanks so much. It's always illuminating talking with you, and I, I appreciate your giving us the time. Thank you.